Do you know that feeling where you pour your heart and soul into a project for several weeks and then, you know, you put it out there, you think you've created something awesome and the internet is just like, meh. Well, I still think these two plastic casting projects have turned out beautifully, even if YouTube doesn't much care for them. But there was still a ton of interest from you guys in the comments under these videos about why I did some things, the way I did them, so let's answer that in this video. Okay, so one of the most asked questions about these projects were, why did I not use mold release? In fact, I do have some mold release here. This is like for injection molding plastic. The basic idea with mold release is you have your masters, you coat them with this stuff, and that creates a separation layer between your master and your molded piece, your casting, and just makes it easier to pull out. Now, what a lot of people have suggested is using something like Pam cooking spray or a rubbing wax or, you know, other mold releases like that. But my concern with those was that any sort of oil or wax or soapy kind of substance on this would seep into the plaster or concrete and then make the gold paint not stick or peel off or create bubbles. So I didn't really want to put anything on top of my molds and looking at the mold for this guy, you know, it, it peeled off very, very cleanly. And I think the main reason why plaster is sticking to these parts and why it's sticking to these uh, bigger ones, there's the eye from the on air sign, is because of the physical texture of these parts. These are 3D printed, these are not perfectly smooth. So you get that roughness and that gives the plaster something to grip onto. Now, as soon as you flex this, it peels off. It's not chemically bonded to it. So I'm not sure if a uh, mold release would actually help much with this. If I were to use some sort of mold release for this, I would probably use some 3D printer bed adhesive, um, something like Printafix or Magigoo, uh, because those are PVAs and PVAs are something that, you know, typically creates a film on your surface. And a PVA is also a good primer for paint. So even if something transfers onto the molded part, it's gonna give better adhesion to the gold paint instead of, you know, making it peel off. Launcher Spider commented on YouTube, Hi Tom, you used the term tolerance in this video. It bothers me a while that this term is used wrong in the 3D printing community. And Launcher Spider, you are 100% correct. I used tolerance incorrectly here. So the word I was actually looking for was clearance between the flexible part and the PLA part. So these would slide in and out of each other uh, easier. Now, tolerance, clearance, interference, all those things are used quite sloppily in the community, yes. And it would probably be a good idea to make a, a clarification video about, you know, what the technically correct terms on all these things are. So yeah, I'm gonna put that on my list for next year. But in my defense, uh, I'm a one man operation, so I'm running camera, lights, sound, talking about something, doing a project at the same time. So looking for words is sometimes quite tough when you have to do it on the spot. So please excuse me misspeaking there. Um, I'll try to pay better attention. One suggestion that I've seen pop up quite a few times in the comments was to use a draft angle. Now I actually used a draft angle on this part and I showed that in the video how I added that. It's actually rather easy to do, but I did not use a draft angle on these parts for the on air sign. Now, because this part came out so easily out of this uh, candle holder, I thought like, well, this, this should be fine, right? I don't need a draft angle, it's flexible after all, it can just peel away. But no, 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 it wasn't that easy. Now, what a draft angle does is basically it creates that relief so as soon as you pull out your mold from your cast part or your molded part, the clearance between your mold and the part increases as you pull it up because your surfaces are, are kind of sloped up. So basically you pull out a conical shape out of another one. And I gotta say it would have helped tremendously with the on-air sign, not just because it would allow the flexible part to peel out more easily or to pull out more easily out of the cast part, but also because it would allow uh, the solid PLA core out of the flexible shell much, much more easily. Basically, as soon as you've got the first millimeter pulled out, the rest is going to be super easy because your clearance just increases as you pull it out. So yeah, that's definitely something that I would add in a future project and a draft angle like five degrees even probably wouldn't be noticeable on this, but would make demolding these parts so much easier. And yeah, it's just really easy to do. So if you're going to do a project like this for yourself, definitely add a draft angle. So one really interesting idea was, could I just have taken this part with the PLA part still in it, flipped it upside down, put it in my oven and melted the PLA out? And 
yeah, probably that could have worked. Now with plaster, I was pretty careful with what temperatures I heated this up to. I think I started out at 70 degrees Celsius and then cranked it up to 110, 120, uh, just to get the water from boiling off. But I had read a few different bits of information on what the actual temperature resistance of plaster is. Uh, one source talks about 130 degrees or so, another talks about 1300 degrees Celsius. And the thing is plaster kind of turns back into its uncured form if you heat it to a certain temperature. So basically you take a plaster you add water to it, you let it cure, you put it back in the oven, it turns back to dust that you can then add water back into and recast. And obviously I didn't want that to happen. But it turns out as soon as you've got the water evaporated and the plaster is dry, you can heat it up quite far. Cody's lab actually just published a video where he's encasing a nitinol wire in plaster and then heating that up in a furnace and there's only very minor damage to the plaster. It cracks, yeah, but that is what, 13, 1400 degrees Celsius. Uh, with PLA you'd only have to heat it to 250, 300, and it would literally just fall straight out. So that is definitely something to try out. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use the same oven that I'm then gonna bake my pizzas in for this, uh, but if you have something like a small toaster oven that you use for reflow soldering or other stuff, then that would be you know a good use case for that. But then again, I'm not quite sure how clean the actual surfaces would come out with PLA sticking to it everywhere. Um, well, only one way to find out. And of course the discussion concrete versus plaster. Now I've used plaster for both of these castings, mostly because it is just way, way faster to work with. A plaster casting you can easily demold after 24 hours if it's curing properly. Uh, a concrete part, well, it's still gonna be very, very green. I didn't really have the time to wait for a concrete or mortar or some other cement based product to set up all the way before I can demold it. So I did stick with plaster. Now uh, with a painted part like this, it kind of doesn't make a difference, right? You, you don't see the raw surface anyways. I think a concrete surface would have looked kind of nice too. But again, it's gonna be a much slower process and you're not gonna be able to try out as many different things with a concrete process if you have to wait a week before you can demold it. Now, both plaster and concrete cure by hydration, which means the water used for originally mixing up the plaster or concrete or mortar, uh, it doesn't just evaporate. It actually reacts with the cement and with the plaster itself to form a new compound that is then, you know, stable and hard. And that's the exact reason why I put the cellophane wrap of the first casting of this guy in mortar, um, just to keep the moisture in to give it that, that extra moisture to cure. The reason why I then still put these into the oven, these plaster parts, is that the plaster doesn't fully dry once it's cured, so there's still a lot of moisture absorbed into the plaster. And if you just have a cured but still wet part, you're not going to be able to paint it, obviously. So that was the main reason for me, just so I would be able to keep on working on these and that I wouldn't have to wait for these parts to then dry after they had already cured. Apparently I still don't know how to properly mix plaster. There seems to be some weird alchemy to it. Uh, that seems kind of counterintuitive. So apparently you actually have to let the plaster sit in water instead of stirring it, which seems counterintuitive to me. Now, one more thing that I would for sure do differently uh, on this larger one is the electrical work and the bulbs in here. Now, these bulbs were not the best choice. You saw in the video, these are way, way brighter than they need to be. Also, these are 240 volt bulbs, so they run off of mains. And apparently wet plaster is conductive. And when I installed these sockets, apparently somewhere something was touching the still wet plaster and this entire thing was live. I measured it, we had like 220 volts to ground on this thing. Not safe. Don't do this at home. If you're gonna make a sign like this, I think a way better choice would be Christmas tree lights. Just light strings with uh, single LEDs on there. Those are insulated, way smaller, they produce way less light, so it's not gonna be blinding at full power. And you can still create a hole for them, stick them through, and they're gonna create pretty much the same effect. Then of course, the question about how I got these 240 volt bulbs to be less bright, well, I don't think you want to know. So yeah, my recommendation would be uh, just to use Christmas tree lights. Especially after Christmas, I think you can get them really, really cheap and they're great for projects where you just need a lot of small light bulbs, like this. All right, so I hope that answered some of your questions on this plaster casting project and why I did some things the way I did. Um, if you're gonna try something like this, I would love to see it. So tweet it at me at toms3dp. Also, if you have more questions about this project and what the best processes and all are, uh, there is a thread in the community forums newly relaunched at forum.toms3d.org. Uh, I'm gonna link that below. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.